Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we're going to aim for the moon, for better or for worse. We have a contract, lunar flyby 289 days. We already have one rocket being built for it, the Lunar Atlas, very expensive. Uh, 16 days left until that is fully constructed. But I have this other option, which is thanks to certain other discoveries that I've made in the meantime. And the main discovery is this Pioneer probe, which uh, had a cost of 7200 to unlock. Pioneer 5 was ascended to interplanetary space outside of Earth's SOI. But the interesting thing about it here is that it has avionics for 4.1 tons. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than uh, the other avionics package, the early controllable core here. Uh, which allows for 0.2 tons. Now this does have a reduced wattage option, but that doesn't really matter for this because it starts off with only 5 watts of requirement. And even better, it comes with its own solar panels. 800 watts, it says. And if it can do 800 watts, it's a whole lot better than our other solar panels. These are only 3 watts a piece. So certainly it's not going to have much of a power problem. And besides that, it's got all these scientific experiments, it's only 43.2 kilograms, and it has 5 gigameters of always-on communication range. That's 5 million kilometers, which is definitely enough to handle the moon. Now, of course, there's an interplanetary probe, uh, Pioneer 5, 6, 7, 8, and I think even 9 were, all, were a set of interplanetary probes set around the sun. So it is supposed to have pretty good communication and all sorts of science and the ability to control itself and power and solar panels. So this is not unreasonable. Uh, and the electric charge is academic as long as it can power itself, of course. So if it works all right, then yay, right? I mean, hopefully. Not sure it's going to work all right. Uh, we've had to do some tucking in to get it to fit into the sphering and still have... So, of course, uh, we've got a tank here with just enough fuel to meet that 0.1 tons. Actually, it's a little bit less, uh, so we're a little bit under. But that just means we can slap on some more instruments or something. And we've got the one kilonewton thruster and that's hydrazine there. Let me take the sphering off. So, we've got uh, hydrazine in this tank. You can see utilization 33 in order to uh, make sure that we're under the 0.1 ton of control. And then we have a foreshortened AJ-10 stage, which is only 40 seconds of burn time. And then a uh, regular AJ-10 stage with the full 1 minute and 55 seconds. The reason for this is that if we want to, we can use this stage and this stage combined to set this probe into geosynchronous orbit, in theory. So you see, geosynchronous usually takes 2,400 and then about 1,500 in order to circularize at the higher orbit. So that's an option for this. But the moon is also an option when you add these two together. And of course, the one kilonewton thruster can restart. So we don't have to finish the, that whole burn or anything. We can do multiple burns with it. So very flexible options. And then the rest of the Atlas rocket. And I think it's safe to say that the Atlas rocket can lift. Uh, a payload of 0.87 tons to orbit without any problems. So that's what we've got. Uh, well, without any problems as long as the engines actually ignite, of course. So this is a very promising rocket thanks to that one probe core. I also unlocked the Thor Delta avionics unit, which would have been a good thing to replace these two with, right? I mean, these are 0.2 tons a piece and that has the capability to uh, handle both uh, the same amount of avionics that both of those do. Unfortunately, it's got a greater diameter. It's got the 2.44 meter diameter, I assume, of a Delta rocket. So yeah, that's pretty advanced actually. That's something that happens much later in Delta development. Anyway, so we can't use that right now. And I think that was it. We really haven't really unlocked anything else. It'd be really super helpful if we got 
AJ10s that could restart. But I don't think any of the configurations that we're going to unlock has more than one ignition, which is weird because having more than one ignition is very quickly a major selling point for the AJ10s, even the early ones, even on the Able stage rather than the Delta stage. So yeah, I mean, but you can see just one ignition for all of these and uh, also on this one. So hopefully we'll get some that have more than one ignition some at some point. It's a little bit frustrating right now though. Right now the only thing that we have that has more than one ignition is the one kill newton thruster. Anyway, so this is option number two and we'll have the fairings dumped separately from everything else. After we ignite that stage it should be possible. And it's not not really cheaper than everything else. Uh, 4,340 and then a rollout cost of 14,000 here. It's basically the same as the other one, even though we've gotten rid of a whole lot of really tiny solar panels at the top, which the other one has. But I think its capabilities overall are much better than the other option that we already have queued up. So Lunar Atlas 2 will have that queued up as well. It's a risk, but I'm going to go ahead and also queue up the upgrade to mission control that allows flight planning. And that costs 200,000. It's going to take a full year to finish. So we're going to go with that. Uh, if it turns out that we've got a good system with the Lunar Atlas 2, we can pick up the Lunar Orbit contract or Lunar Impact contract and make up the funds. Right now, we can't really spend on upgrade, uh, upgrade points, I don't think and still have enough buffer for what I prefer. So anyway, let's time warp the 16 days and try out the Lunar Atlas. Okay, so here we are, and let's make sure we line up with the moon. That's the best we can do really for our, our chances. We don't have the ability to plot our course once we get to orbit and make sure of it. We will eventually be able to see if we hit Lunar SOI during the translunar injection burn. We're losing a bit of oxygen though. Maybe I'll let the fuel pumps fill this up even though that's going to reduce our thrust to weight ratio initially. It's probably better than having a fuel imbalance. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And ignition. <laughs> Well, well, that's not going to work very well, is it? I did update test flight, by the way. So I guess uh, somewhere we've got the option to get rid of ignition failures, which uh, considering the awkwardness of how, you know, when we roll back and roll out again, it always seems to light one engine immediately. Maybe that's for the best. But anyway, let's recover active vessel and then fix the engines I suppose. Okay ladies and gentlemen it gives me no pleasure to do this and I'm completely lying about that but it is going to be buggy we know that Kerbal construction time is going to it's gonna ignite the engines right when we get back to the launch pad and no matter what we do in the VAB to modify the rocket it's gonna light those engines the two that went off the last time. So let's uh have pre-launch ignition failures disabled in test flight now, now that I have that option. And we'll see, we'll see. Now, I don't know what that's gonna do for this rocket that we're recovering and it takes 15 days to roll back. I don't even know if I wanna roll this rocket out again, to be honest. Um, we might as well because then maybe we'll get its ignitions out of the way, you know, the auto ignitions, so that the engines will be cleared for Lunar Atlas 2. Uh, but of course, rolling it out again is going to hit us with the rollout cost of 14,000 funds. Just to give you an idea, well, actually it says 9,000 here, so 14,000 includes the cost of the rocket. But uh, it's worth noting that, of course, 9,000 funds is... Uh, the, the standard in Realism Overhaul is one fund is $1,000 in $1960. So that's 9,000,000 $1960. 
and then the rate of inflation is such that $1 in 1960 is $8 now. So the rollout cost right there is $72 million in current dollars, roughly speaking, probably a little bit more than that, um, which is by some accounts, the cost of a Falcon 9 rocket. So I'll leave that be as a thought. And uh, I guess we'll roll it out and bite that cost. And we will see. As expected. Well, it's only the one engine that uh, did ignite last time. Uh, you know, as long as we have the fuel pump, uh, the fuel pump is enabled. Uh, can we enable it such that... No, we can't get quite enough fuel. Okay, uh, let's just get started then. Uh, activate engine. Activate engine. While that's starting to go up, I'll target the moon and see how bad we are. Oh, 7 degrees is not bad. We could probably correct that during the launch, maybe. So there's a chance. And we basically corrected the inclination. So that's good too. trying to milk the booster engines for as much as possible. But I think that's enough. Mm, it's pro it was probably not enough. We really should have kept them going. Oh well. I don't know how long the LR-105 is going to last. We'll see. I feel like I, the timing has to be a little bit different for all this. Uh, no, actually, that's not bad. We might be in luck. We need to do a continuous burn to the moon. And it so happens that our timing seems to be okay for that. But I didn't really think about that. Because the AJ-10 stage provides us with both translunar injection and completing our orbit. And... Yeah. That means... And of course we only have one ignition, so... Well, the LR-105 is going over time again. And amazingly, it managed to complete the burn. RCS on, separation. Check, check, check. And ignition. And we have two engines. And boy, is that not trivial. Now, the probe has more than a thousand meters per second for corrections. And, you know, potentially to make orbit if we get to that point. So we have options. One thing is we really need to orient the solar panels properly. We put so many solar panels on here. Where's the sun, anyway? The sun's right in front of us. Well, if, if we rotate so the solar panels are on top, it should be fine. Uh, I don't know. This is our only core. It's still losing power. Is there some problem with these solar panels? Direct sunlight. It should only be taking 19 watts. What says watts? I guess maybe 19 watts is only when it's time warping. Anyway, we have to continue burning, so we are continuing to burn here. 1.3 degree relative inclination is the best we can do right now. And there is that. Well, I guess we can try and use up the hydrazine here. Ooh, that's not doing anything good on our trajectory, though. I guess we'll leave it be, and it's time to try and use the one kilonewton thruster. Separation. Okay. Oh, uh, throttle us down. There we go.
and well we'll have to overburn a bit and try and do an off-plane transfer but that's better than nothing ignition taking a look at the requirements for lunar flyby we have to get within 5,000 kilometers and then collect science so if we run out of electric charge that's not going to work out for us the core did say 19 watts so I don't know why we're consuming 190 watts oh there we go ah. all right we've got a thing that's within 5,000 kilometers all right do we need to Hmm. Well, I probably shouldn't do another one. I mean, that gets us to where we need to be, so let's not mess around with that. Right now, anyway. What I would really like is to make sure we have power. That means rolling. Did that change our periapsis? No. Okay. Are we getting power? Yeah, 2.3 watts apiece, which should be enough if it consumes 19. Yes, it is. All right. Well, let's keep an eye on that. Relative rotation to the sun. Okay. Hopefully you'll do the trick. We are recharging. When you spend this much on solar panels, you really hope they work. What about communication though? Unlike the Explorer Core, I don't have a long range communication device on here. I think I missed out on that. Oh yeah, we lost communication already. Darn it. But I failed. <laughs> we'll get a world's first though, I think, right? Let's get there and check. What other messages? We we just have the stage destroyed messages. No? No world's first for this? I mean, come on. We should have smacked it into the moon. I think this is gonna go interplanetary eventually. Now, uh, how's our timing? Still 36 days until Lunar Atlas. And 22 days until Earth Escape. Well, let's follow it out. Well, I guess we'll only get a world's first if we do have communication. But here it is. In Solar SOI. Alright, back to Space Center. Okay, we're getting ready to launch Lunar Atlas 2, having constructed it. And we've rush built a bit on a backup Lunar Atlas 2, so it's only got 53 days left. And uh, we also have in 14 days, 1958 orbital rocketry will be completed. So we have that to look forward to. It's about time. And yeah, uh, the thing is, Mission Control, its upgrade is going to take 250 days. And so that'll be after the contract is up, unfortunately. Uh, if it turns out that we can't do the lunar flyby in time, we will try and quickly grab the lunar orbit and lunar impactor contracts because after the previous mission, I think, you know, we have some reason to believe we'll eventually manage to do these things. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, let's launch. I did not attempt to time warp to daylight because, of course, we have to line up with the moon anyway. Instead of having a dual AJ-10 stage, this has a single AJ-10 and another single AJ-10. I don't know if that's a better arrangement or not. We'll see. Probability-wise, it's probably a wash. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And... Ignition. launch. Very slow ascent. That's not great given the burn time stuff, but 
but hopefully with 1958 technology we'll get more robust engines that can actually use the fuel. I think I've been turning a little bit too aggressively here. Alright, we're in dangerous territory as far as the booster engines. But I still want to keep them burning. Okay, that's enough. Alright. Hopefully that'll be good enough to help out the LR-105. Leaves us with a thrust weight ratio of 1. That's always good. So, in this case, we are not relying on the first AJ-10 in order to start off us off on our transfer burn. We don't have to worry about that. But uh, And it looks like we have a fair amount of Delta V to work with. Taking a look... We could potentially just keep burning. Taking, I mean, we're, we're over here right now. And if we just kept burning, we'd hit the moon over here somewhere. That's certainly viable. We're a bit high for a translunar injection sort of situation. Normally would like to be as close to the Earth as possible. Well, the LR-105 is sure a sport as far as this stuff is concerned. Always working overtime. Okay, RCS on. Separation. Okay, settling fuel down. And ignition. Engine is lit. Fairing separation. That went well. Uh, let's see now. Hmm. I may have may have made a minor mistake here, in that I think the solar panels are actually tied to the decoupling, but I'm not sure. I don't really want it to decouple. We're basically pointed in the right direction, so I'll just keep it burning because that'll give us better margins uh, just in case the other stage fails. Okay, well, uh, we don't need the HTP, that's for sure. Got I don't know why I've got HTP on this stage, I guess that's just a leftover. I, I should have reconfigured it to Hydrazine, I mean. I guess we should just continue going. Yeah, alright, let's throw down there. Speaking of things we didn't need, we've still got two science experiments on the bottom of this one. Okay, separation. And that's settled. Oh, there's a bit that I see. Ignition. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, well, yeah. That's gonna be annoying. Test flight got us on that one. But you know, better than having two on the same stage and have it spinning out of control. I guess. And we still got uh, 1,551 up here, but that's not enough to get to the moon. But we might as well try it out. So... Whoa, what just... Duh? <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. Well, maybe we can get high over Earth science at least. Maybe. I don't know if we'll get there, actually. Okay, RCS, just stop. No, it doesn't look like we're going to get there. I mean, losing an entire stage of 2,400 meters per second is not going to be easy. All right, so if I click decouple, is that how we deploy the solar panels? Let's see. Uh, it 
did that thing again. No, apparently not. Maybe I had to do it through normal staging. Doesn't look like it's getting power. Toggle power? No. No, co no connection. Oh, it is. it was getting power briefly. Uh, no connection might be just because we don't have a ground station nearby. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, okay. It, it seems to be recharging even though we haven't got the panels extended. We can see that there isn't any drain right now. Okay. Well, let's uh, keep it going just to make sure. What, what have we got? Oh, just the normal stage destroyed stuff. Does it have anything that we haven't done before? Mass spectrometry we've done before. Okay, so we've done all this, but the important thing is, even though the solar panels didn't do their deploy animation, we seem to be getting our electric charge. And at least at this height, it's maintaining communication. Okay, well, hopefully the next one will work a little bit better. We have time to queue up a few more if necessary. We just need one that will work with all the engines functioning properly. Okay, I've already queued up uh, another backup Lunar Atlas 2, but we're going to complete 1958 orbital rocketry in 12 days, so I might edit that one and see what benefit we can get out of the new technology, and then I will report to you. And maybe we'll change the one that's currently under construction as well if it turns out to be really good stuff. So the upgrade to the AJ-10 is the AJ-1042 here. And it's got a longer rate of burn time, which is good. But it's actually got less ISP than the current AJ-10, as well as less thrust by just 0.8 kilonewtons. But the ISP drop is interesting. And so... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether it's really better. It might be more reliable, hopefully, maybe. Depends. I, mean, I don't know if that's how it shakes out or not. Hopefully our data points carry over. 10,000 data points, you know. But uh, I guess it's worth a try. I won't change the one that's currently under construction. I'll just change this one. And we'll see whether that's to any benefit. It seems like this version is just cheaper and of course has the longer burn time. We have lost a little bit of Delta V switching to this version though. I'll make sure that we rebalance the tanks just in case so show that and remove. Remove. I think the fuel mix is still the same though. And it doesn't look like we got an upgrade to our hydrazine tech level. I sure wouldn't mind getting this RD0105, but its entry cost is 90,000. Um, this form factor is nice because if it's got that ring at the top there, it won't fit our stages, but this one will, will fit our stages, so that's good. Still just one ignition, but the ISP in vacuum is excellent, so... Well, actually it's this one, 316. And it's also got a fairly substantial burn time. You can see the 0105 has 7 minutes and 20 seconds. That's pretty darn good. So yeah, once we can get that, uh, we should get that. But right now, we, don't, we really don't have the funds. Okay, here we go. One more time. Okay, we have lined up. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. Okay, launch. So when I started out this career, I didn't realize that I was just going to be launching a whole bunch of Atlas rockets, but right now that doesn't seem to be a too bad an idea. I mean, to do an R7 rocket, I'd have to upgrade the pad. I don't really want to do that because that's going to increase the rollout costs. We could probably get a whole lot of mileage with uh, 150 ton rockets as long as we have Atlas and stuff like this. 
Oh, it occurs to me we could have also potentially upgraded these engines. I was so focused on the AJ-10 for obvious reasons. Okay, booster separation. Just the LR-105 now. We're still accumulating data points on the LR-105, by the way. That's one engine we haven't gotten to 10,000 on. Since it seems like the opposite direction up to the moon is in front of us right now, my guess is we can't do a direct transfer this time. We can't... No? Yeah, we can't just uh, continue burning. We're gonna have to make orbit first. Which means that there will be Delta V left over in this AJ-10 stage. RCS on, separation. And we will coast a bit. Okay, throttle up. And it's stable, so... Ignition. Alright. And fairing set. It is good to have a little bit of extra on this stage anyway because, you know, we might have loss of performance on some engine and then it could make up for it. That's good enough. 285 by 187. Okay, uh, we'll have uh, that stage tag along for now. Uh, we can use its... well, maybe we should just let it go. I mean, it's not like we can relight it or anything. Okay, we'll, we'll let it go. Um, roughly speaking, around here should be a good place to start the burn for the moon. Can't plot it yet. We still haven't unlocked uh, mission control upgrade. It does depend on communication still. It says we have communication. I just don't know through what. It's a bit of a problem. Oh, uh, through Goober bus over here. Interesting. Well, I'll take it. Hopefully it'll hold out. I think this is about the right time to do stuff. Uh, it might be too close. See, now half of an orbit of the moon is 14 days. It takes about two days to get to the moon. Core of an orbit is seven days. It looks like that's three days right there, and then four days for the rest of the quarter, and so we could start now. Okay. Makes sense. Right? Right. Orbit prograde. Okay, throttling up. Please work this time. Ignition. It didn't. It, it failed again. Same stage. Twice. Hmm. Well. Great. Well, anyway, we do have queued up an upgraded version of this engine, and maybe it'll work better. Failed to ignite again. Wow. Yep, so yep, hopefully that upgrade is one that reduces the propensity of it to fail like this. We'll see, but we'll have to see in the next episode because we've tried at this three times and I need to wrap up. So next time we have another Lunar Atlas 2 ready to go. That one has the upgraded engines and we'll see if it works any better. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.